sister. Sin. Sister, sin. Let's do this. <laughs>
we have Candace Michelle, founder and editor of Black Pinup Magazine. Tell us how you launched this project, Candace. I uh, had a Facebook page called Black Pinup Models that I started in January of 2012, and um, I was looking around for black pinup magazines and I didn't see any. So um, I was just like, wouldn't it be cool if there's a black pinup magazine and saw that there wasn't any? And I'm like, oh, well, someone should create a magazine for that. <laughs> and simple I just said, yeah, why did it be you? <laughs> Do you have a background in modeling? No, I actually was in fashion. Oh, okay. Well, give us a bit of your fashion design history. Uh, all the women on both sides of my parents all made clothes. So it just happened that I would be a fashion designer. <laughs> yep, so I was in school for fashion design um, when I came up with Black Pet Models Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And just went from there. Are you talking about generations of uh, fashion designers in your family? We're talking about 1800s. <laughs> and women that just made clothes and everything, so... How did you go about finding the models during the early stages? Um, I typed in black pinup models and I saw a couple of old pinup models, but I really, it was Angelique Noir, and I saw, I'm like, oh, she's a woman of today, and she actually does pinup modeling like the rest of the girls do, and then, so I friend requested her, and then I saw that there was Ashlita, and then I saw that there's Jenny Rue, and it just kind of spiderwebbed, and... It just went from there, and then uh, within three short years, a lot more black pinups have kicked out the woodwork, which is awesome, because there wasn't as many now as there were when I started. Do you search for them, or uh, do they find you? Well, I found them first, but um, and I just saw who they were connected to and who they're friends with and, and now it's more of they're finding me because whenever you type in black pets in the Google search it brings up a magazine and everything so do you have a team of photographers I know a lot of photographers but I don't have well I, actually no back I I do know a lot of photographers and now I do have photographers that if you work with them, they will put you in the magazine. So I do actually have, uh, so it's a girl works with Missy Neely. She'll contact me and say, Hey, I just did a photo shoot or a girl looks, works with Miss Missy out of Los Angeles. I'll, um, ask her like, Hey, do you have any pictures for me? It's like put up them. So just send them my way. Do you have a full staff now? I'm the, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> so how long does it take to um, complete one magazine? It takes about two to three months. So uh, let's say you have to meet a deadline. How often will you tweak uh, your layouts until the release date? It's all the way up until I release it online. Because I'm always tweaking. I'm like, oh, wait, that doesn't look right. Oh, I need to move this picture over to the right. Oh, it's a little crooked. Or I should add graphics to this and make a background and all that. How do you pace or space yourself? Um, I was trying to look at how the publishing world does it because they have, like, the following month uh, issue out, like, two weeks before the, the actual okay. month. So that's how I pace myself. I try to do it like they do. Do you have a business degree or anything? Actually, I'm going to uh, enroll in, back in college again <laughs> to get um, a small business and entrepreneurship certificate. So that will help me a lot with my business. So uh, what are your dreams and goals regarding Black Peanut Magazine? Um, I want it to be as big as Vogue. I want to be like the next Ed Anna Wintour. Yes, I want it to be sold on newsstands with Ebony and Vogue magazine. So, um, mm -hmm. there are a multitude of people out there who sit at home and 
think for a moment. Um, I I think I'd be good at doing um oh jeez I don't know like uh tie dyeing um poodles or something like that. <laughs> you know, okay. So um, you got any advice for those folks? I would say go with your feeling. Um, just that's really how I did it because um, originally I wanted to be a professional athlete. <laughs> I wanted to be the next, the next Lisa Leslie, <laughs> but my knee had other problems. So I was like, "Well, I love to dance, so let's go for that." But my knee had other problems. <laughs> had a life of its own, so I fell into fashion. I was like, oh, okay, I think I'll do this, and then it kind of grabbed me, so. And it kind of makes sense since I love history, and that era always fascinated me, so I just say go with what you feel, and go from there, because you only live once, so I think as many chances as you, you can. Do you have any other goals that you'd like to achieve? Do I have other goals? Um... I want to also create my own fashion line and have a book about pinups and do documentaries and um, a movie about pinups. <laughs> Let's see what else. There's a lot. So that's just the name of you, a TV show and, yeah, reality show about pinups. Which state <laughs> is the magazine based out of? Texas. Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Mm-hmm. Yes. This was simply fantastic. Please let everyone know where they can find you. Go to bustinups.net and you'll find everything there. Uh, my name's Gary Moda. Okay, so Gary, tell me a little bit about what you have going on here. Uh, well, I got uh, dino digs here, and uh, starting with dino eggs, you can crack a dino egg. I sculpted this. And this is a titanosaur. You can find these in uh, South America, in the Badlands of South America. And then here's a uh, hadrosaur. I sculpted this also. And this is a three dimensional model that describes hadrosaur. It's a duck billed dinosaur. I sculpted this. I uh, started with a three dimensional sculpture and then I took that and uh, turned it into this and also turned it into a little tiny dino dig Oops. here. Oh, watch that one. And uh, and here I like take real fossils and you can replicate them and uh, you put them in the digs here. Here's the sculpture I'm working on right now. It's a snap together T-Rex. Never have time to work on it anymore. Oh yeah, and then I got little mini dino digs here and uh, and I sculpted uh, the dinosaur and my buddy made the packaging for these. So you just put little uh, tools in there and the kids love these. Okay, so Gary, um, yeah. when did you become interested? How did you come up with the idea of doing this sort of project? Well, I started out as a sculptor and I got tired of being a sculptor. So then I moved on to, uh, I decided I wanted to be like an inventor, but I don't really have like a technical mind for inventing computers or anything like that. So uh, the first thing I came up with was uh, just a dino dig. And the local kids, I let, uh, let dig on there. And uh, the one kid, I just, you know, I left him on the side of the house and I went inside the house and I fell asleep, took a shower, started making dinner, and then went back outside to throw something away. And bam, there was the kid. He was still there digging on the dig about an hour and a half later. And I was like, whoa, I got something here, you know? So, How long have you been doing this? Well, too long, actually. I've been doing it about 15 years. And, uh, yeah. So where can we find you, Gary? Well, I'm on uh, FossilFind at uh, Gmail. And uh, that's all. I don't even have a website yet. You know, I tried to get a website going once, but that didn't work out. I'm more of a, you know, hands-on, earth, earthy kind of guy. Doing, uh, you know, sculpting, and uh, now I'm into botany. And so I have uh, eczema, eczema relievers, and I'm currently working on a degreaser, an all-natural degreaser that uh, cleans grease off your hands really fast, really amazingly. And uh, but that needs, I need to work on that a little bit. So I'm gonna just kind of stick to the dinosaur thing for right now, you know that. And uh, how you doing? Good, thank you. Today you're out here at uh, 
San Pedro Farmer's Market okay. on, uh, what street is this? Six and six. Street. How often do you get out to farmer's markets to, to sell your items? Oh, I go out uh, at least once a week, you know, to Buena Park or Huntington Beach. And uh, But, you know, Christmas time, you start hitting all the farmer's markets. It's a lot of fun, very, uh, you know, personal. It's, you know, old style. So that's why I like the farmer's markets. So is this a seasonal thing or is this all year round for you? Well, in the summer I'll do a lot of kid programs, so I do a lot, a lot of dino dig programs and I developed a, a, a mummy dig where kids got to dig out a, a mummy out of a sarcophagus, or dig out sarcophaguses with mummies inside and their scarabs and I'll let them each keep a scarab. Now when you do the, uh, the programs with the children, how do you, is it through LA Unified or how is this, how did you? Uh, an agent. I got two agents, they book the shows for you. Okay, so how do we get in contact with you and your oh, agent? Uh, Full Spectrum Educational is uh, one of my agents. Okay, so tell us again where we can get in contact with you, loudly and clearly. Uh, fossil find at Gmail. So when you are creating, do you listen to music in the background? Oh, of course, yeah. Do you have any favorites by any chance that help you, that inspire you, move you, motivate you? Well, just whatever at the moment, you know, I'll, I'll just grab any old CD and if I haven't listened to it in a while, I'll just, you know, but yeah, mellow, mellow music's good for when you're sculpting, you know, but working in a shop, jazz or classical, you know, some nice background music where you don't have to, you know, really hear it, you know, it's just there. What's your favorite song? Or do you have a favorite song? My favorite song? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I like uh, some of those, uh, like, what's that guy's name? Uh, does, uh, gosh, I don't know. It's hard to hard to pin him down. Uh, Jim Croce, you know, you can name quite a few songs from him. And, uh, okay. Has there ever been a single song oh, that like, has changed a moment in your life? Oh, well, I don't think that, but I do really like, uh, it's hard to remember the names of them nowadays. What's that one from that Sting, that one song I like? Uh, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, it's kind of lame, but I really like that. I guess that was kind of, you're a little kid watching that show, that movie, uh, Sundance Kid, and you're like, oh, I like that song. So now every time I hear it, you're like, oh yeah, I love that song. Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, Ooh, B.J. Thomas. Yeah. Can you remember the very first song that made you giggle? Giggle? No, uh, I don't know. I've been, uh, I'm old now. I used to listen to a song, uh, I don't know. That's, that's a good question. Couldn't sit and say, you know. First song that ever made you cry? Uh, I don't know. What song will make you cry? I don't know. I'm a guy, so I don't really cry too much for songs, you know. You kind of, you know, classical kind of hits you sometimes, you know. And uh, I, I couldn't, couldn't say that. I wouldn't remember that. I have to think about that. forget to hit like and subscribe to the Frida Rente page for now on YouTube.
Um, you can go to Facebook, Altered Culture TV, Facebook, Noise Fest, Facebook, Frida Rente. Um, if you would like to send an MP4 video file, please send it to Frida's Rainbow Message Center at gmail.com. That'll be down there as well. Um, I want to say thank you for tuning in to the first and second episode. If you haven't checked out the first episode, do so. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's still, we have a lot of kinks and things to work out. I mean, cause, because it's still pretty new. It's the new baby. Thank you very much for sticking with us. For all the rockers, nodders, stompers, boppers, bangers, so forth, so on. Do your thing, because nobody can do it for you. Peace. Wow, 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 wow,